Okay, I am really, really getting totally out of control with these videos. But when you have ADHD, whatever you get involved with, you excel. All right. I tape, this is the first, I never did this before. I just tape, see if you could tell. Let me rewind it. And it's an interview between my hero, Steve Murphy, and Chris Austin. I taped it. I never watched it. And I want to see. Wait a minute. Available now. is now into his first full week as Premier of New Brunswick, presumably working on a speech from the throne, which will be delivered a week from tomorrow. Of course, in order for his PC minority government to survive, Premier Higgs will need the support of at least three opposition MLAs, something the People's Alliance of New Brunswick has said it is willing to provide on a vote-by-vote -vote basis for a period of 18 months. So that makes the leader of the PANB a key figure in the legislature. We're very pleased to have Chris Austin joining us tonight from Fredericton. Mr. Austin, appreciate you coming in today. Thanks very much. Thank you, Steve. Good. To... Thank you, Steve. Good to be here. Okay, good to be here. I never watched this. I can't wait to hear this. This is going to be long. It's already one minute and forty seconds. Sorry. Uh, good for you newcomers. Go to Facebook. Uh, write Chris Austin and Charles LeBlanc. Go to YouTube. Write Chris Austin and Charles LeBlanc. You'll see a couple interviews. Read it. Now, this morning. I hear something on CBC, I was a little bit pissed off, can you imagine me being pissed? Uh, Michel Carrier, Michel Carrier is the new, they call it the new acting commissioner, language commissioner in New Brunswick. Michel Carrier was appointed in 2011 by Bernard Lord. He was the first language commissioner. Then it was Catherine Dandremont and she caused so much trouble so much trouble. She put back the language issue about 50 years. And I emailed Michel Carrier this morning because um, he was on CBC and he said he was acting really, He usually he was a guy that was doing things behind, behind the scenes. With, with uh, Terry Sagan this morning, he was pretty straightforward. He was talking like a moody Quebecois. But anyway, he said something that I believe is fake news because I have never... I hear so many things as an activist, as a blogger, the language issue, and as an Acadian, proud Acadian at that, I hear a lot of foolish issues like, well, how come we don't put the kids uh, together in the same school? You know, and uh, how come we don't put them in the same bus? Uh, issues like that. I don't even... I discussed about it a few minutes, but this morning, uh, I think that's r ridiculous because you gotta have your own culture. Anyway, Charlie, focus. This morning, Michel Carrier said somebody, some people suggested that if uh, an Acadien has an attack de cœur, a heart attack, uh, <laughs> they would put a phone in his ear. So he could speak to somebody that speak Le Francais. Somebody suggested that. Well, you know what? I have never, never, never heard that in my life. That is fake news. News to cause shit. Okay, focus, Charles. What I'm going to do, we're going to see what Steve Murphy says. And I'm going to stop the question. Before he, uh, Chris Austin answers, I'm going to see if I can answer for Chris. See if you had the same way of thinking. Like I said, I interviewed Chris last week, and uh, Rhea Cadians has really nothing to worry about this guy. And he's a former pastor. So let's see how Steve did. Here. Mr. Austin, now that the dust has finally settled from the election, it seems you have indeed emerged as the kingmaker, or I guess in this case, the premier maker. Uh, Mr. Higgs can't keep his job without your support. How do you see your role and your obligations going forward? I see, Steve. Uh, thanks for the question. I see my obligation is to uh, suggest to the Premier uh, some common sense approach. Common sense, you know, that's what people want, common sense. And I 
I don't think he'll talk about language. I think he's going to talk about other issues. This is a long one. Sorry. Well, look, we've said from uh, day one, uh, you know, we'll continue to say the same message now that we're elected. We're, we're here for the people. And, uh, you know, the three of us that have been elected for the People's Alliance, we're, you know, we're to go back to our constituents, uh, you know, try to get a feel for what they're looking for and vote on a bill-by-bill -bill basis as we, as we uh, you know, continue to make government work. But for an opposition party and a small opposition party, you stand to have a good deal of influence uh, because, in fact, it will require your support to keep the government in power. How do you plan to use that influence? Well, we'll use that influence, like he just said, bill by bill approach, or uh, the, the common sense, the common sense approach. I think that's what he's going to say. I was wrong the first reply. Well, the, to you know, initiate the uh, the very things we've campaigned on. Uh, you know, paramedics being the number one. Uh, that's something we've been fighting for for years. Uh, it's it's I'm very optimistic that you know in this situation we can actually work to get some common sense policies uh, within government and ambulance New Brunswick to make sure paramedic response times are, are better for rural areas. Areas. Right. I want to come back to paramedics in just a minute, but I want to clarify a couple of other things before we move on. What sort of understanding do you have with Blaine Higgs. I know you say you have no formal agreement, but what kind of understanding do you have with him? Uh, an understanding is uh, for 18 months, we will try for 18 months to uh, see if we could work uh, together and uh, try, you know, show some. Uh, let's see, the word common sense there, let's not, okay, common sense, common sense, but you have to think about people's rights also. But we'll have to work with the government for 18 months, as we promised. Plus, he doesn't want an election now because the first time in eight years that he's making the bucks good money. What the hell would he want an election for? Okay. With him? Well, look, to this point, uh, it's been working very well. Uh, we've had several meetings, uh, discussions by phone, face-to-face. -face. Um, they've been very uh, good in the sense of uh, including us on, on decisions and and uh, information from government. So, again, this is going to be a bill-by-bill, day-by-day basis. Uh, we have no formal co coalition. We're not interested in that. Uh, what we are interested in is enacting some changes to uh, how government operates in this province. Short of a formal coalition, why aren't you interested? in at least a formal agreement on supply and confidence of the sort we see in British Columbia, which, which guarantees to the markets, among others, that there will in fact be stability in, in the province. Well, we did promise, Steve, 18 months. 18 months uh, we promised not to bring down the government. And, uh, but do, they do have a lot of things in common, him and Steve and Blaine Higgs. But 18 months, that's what we have here. That's what he should say province well our concern is is we don't want to lose our voice and we don't want to lose uh, the message that we've been driving home and I think by you know uh, forming any type of formal coalition it would it would water down our ability uh, to hold government accountable and to continue, continue to drive our message home but again short of a formal coalition what about a formal agreement 18 not, months. not necessarily a coalition to govern but 18, a formal agreement to support months. the government 18 months well, and again, when I met with the Lieutenant Governor here a while back, I did uh, assure her that on confidence motions, uh, that they would get our support for the next 18 months. Uh, confidence motions happen, I think, once, twice a year. Right. Uh, but most bills and legislation that's passed is a vote-by-vote -vote basis. And I want my MLAs to have the right to represent their people on a free vote basis. So uh, I think it's important that we have that, uh, that you know, autonomy to be able to represent our people and not be in anyone's back pocket. But how can you say you're going to give your members free votes on the one hand when you've already already said you're going to vote for the throne speech no matter what's in it. <laughs> We're going to vote for the throne speech no matter what's in it. No matter what's in it. I can't answer that. In it. That doesn't sound we, like it. We haven't seen the throne speech yet. How can he vote on the throne speech no matter what's in it? He hasn't seen it. Come on, Steve. Sound like a, well, like a free vote. Yeah, and the difference is, is between confidence motions and bill-by-bill -bill legislation. Like, we can pass legislation or deny legislation that will not collapse government. Our government will get up the next morning and continue to function. So when you talk about confidence motions, we want to create that stability and let New Brunswickers know they have a stable government. That's why I've, I've uh, you know, made sure that uh, we, we have that stability by voting for confidence motions. But bill-by-bill -bill, uh, does not confidence motions, and those, those bills would have a free vote. So to be clear, you're going to vote for the throne speech no matter what is in it. 
We haven't seen the troll speech yet, Steve. I think that's what you should say. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Well, it's a confidence uh, Mr. Higgs and I, it, it is indeed, but it's a confidence motion that rests on Mr. Higgs' shoulders as well. Uh, we're not going to be taken for granted. This is something we have to negotiate. We have to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Higgs is aware of that, and, and I look forward to you know uh, providing some input to the throne speech. Uh, when you look at the Liberal government throne speech, frankly, there were some very good things in it, but unfortunately for them, it wasn't just a matter of a throne speech. It was a matter of the last four years of how they operated. So, um, you know, there's going to be some pressure on this, no question, uh, but I'm willing to work for stability. What do you expect the throne speech to say about bilingualism? <clears throat> well, here we go. I would expect the throne speech to say uh, to save half a million dollars a year, get rid of the office of the language commissioner because it's totally useless. It caused conflict between French and English. If we got a problem, on a problem pour les droits acadiens, on va au ombudsman ou les droits humains du Nouveau Brunswick, la man. But uh, and bilingualism, the paramedics issue. But the rest, uh, school bus, uh, bus, uh, no, he's not going to talk about that. Language commissioner and paramedics. Well, I don't know if it'll target bilingualism specifically, uh, but when we talk about the paramedic issue, I certainly expect, uh, uh, you know, that we look at that in the throne speech. Um, you know, when we talk about, uh, you know, other issues in government that relate to language, I mean, we understand that as a, as a political party, um, you know, this is a negotiation. It's a, it's a give and a take. So you've got to pick your battles, and paramedics is the first battle we're, we're willing to fight for because it's so crucial to the, you know, to the well-being of New Brunswick. Speaking of uh, the paramedics issue, you have said on the question of delivery of bilingual service, it's a question of how we implement bilingual service in a reasonable common sense way. What strikes you as a reasonable common sense way and what's unreasonable and not sensible about the way it's being done now? Well, a common sense way would see, uh, to, yes, to have at least one person bilingual, try to have one person bilingual in, in the uh, van or the, in the vehicle. Uh, not all paramedics have to be bilingual and the common sense way like uh, Brian Galland was well, uh, okay we're going to bring we're going to bring you to court we're going to bring you to court so the common sense way would be uh, one should be bilingual not every one of them being done now well what's what's not reasonable now is you had paramedics Steve uh, that have years that of seniority yeah. that are unable to get permanent full-time work I mean I paramedics in this province some of them can't even get mortgages uh, for a home they you know they're just completely in limbo yeah. on this part-time basis strictly right. I was just gonna say that there right before I put it on it's true a guy's been there for 10 15 years seniority and a guy that's bilingual arrive and he has more more he'll be laid off he uh, the guy that has been there 15 will be laid out first. That's not right. That is not right. This is strictly because of language. Now, look, I understand there are areas of the province where the threshold is high in, in demographics, and obviously you need bilingual paramedics, but there's other areas where it just doesn't warrant it. And that's why we've introduced things like uh, translation lines, dedicated translation lines, mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it takes to meet the need in the rare case that it needs to be used. Now, hypothetically, Mr. Austin, if you were to receive a call from an EMT, an emergency medical technician, a paramedic, and you were yourself the patient and unable to communicate with the paramedic delivering service, how are you going to feel about that? Well, <clears throat> Steve, 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 uh, what he's going to say is, uh, well, um, as for part of fact, he had a heart uh, operation a few years ago, so therefore it could happen that he would be in need of maybe a problem, especially at the legislator, the blood pressure would go up to listen to all that bullshit, and really, sincerely, he doesn't care if they can speak Chinese or Japanese or whatever, as long as they help help him and keep him alive. That's the answer I see. Feel about that. In terms of language? Yes, in terms of language. 
Well, look, my my first priority is to make sure the paramedic shows up. Uh, that that would be point. number one. And I, but if, you the, know, paramedic, if, but if the paramedic who showed up promptly could not speak English, how would you feel about it? Well, look, that's fine. If, if I'm in the northern regions of the province and I need a paramedic, I'd much rather have a unilingual francophone paramedic show up to take me to the hospital in 15 minutes rather than waiting 40, 45 minutes for a bilingual paramedic. Uh, and besides that, I mean, when, when 911 calls made, the dispatcher's fully bilingual. They're translating all the information to the paramedic en route to the call. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the, the conversation and discussion between the paramedic and the patient is overblown. Paramedics know what they have to do. They're trained and well-trained mm -hmm. to look after the patient. Their job is to get them to the hospital as quickly as possible. In a radio interview today, uh, the Acting Languages Commissioner said, and in fact you put this out in a, in a statement today, that some New Brunswick Anglophones still hold resentment over rights confirmed by New Brunswick's Official Languages Act. How do you feel about the rights that are confirmed in the Official Languages Act? Do you, do you, act? Do you, do you resent those? Well, look. Do you resent those? It's just a question of the Language Commissioner that former lion, Catherine D'Entremont, do you resent those? Do you resent Wayne Grant being fired? Uh, do you resent, uh, oh, that's right, I, talk, I can't talk for myself, I'm gonna talk for him, what's he gonna say? Uh, he's gonna resent what he said on the radio show about uh, uh, somebody, uh, the French, if they want service, on the phone but while they're having a heart attack. And what's the other issue? Uh, resent the fact that uh, all senior servant uh, has to be bilingual. Uh, the, the liberals threw that out. I resent the fact that would he know about the fireman had to tweet en français but proper French. The Fredericton firemen they stopped tweeting emergencies because language commissioner was bitching. Okay, let's see. Well, look. No, listen, we've said all along we support the rights of both French and English in this province. Uh, in terms of the original intent of bilingualism, we support that. We know there was a day when Francophones did not receive government service in their language. That was wrong. Uh, however, what we have today is the pendulum swinging too far to the other the other side, and we've got to get back to a, a balanced, common-sense approach to this. Uh, I think it was very unfortunate for what Mr. Carrier put up, out today. It was very subtle, not so subtle way of, of kind of coming at us, and that's fine. He wants to play politics that's up to him uh, but what I can tell you is our, our opinion hasn't changed our message hasn't changed we support the rights of both linguistic communities we just want to see it done in a common sense fair and practical way to be clear about that you did take that as a personal swipe for mr. Carrier you felt that that was directed at you oh of course it was it was directed at me it wasn't directed at the Green Party uh, that's for them sure um, I don't know how to answer that one but I didn't know the language commissioner would be politically involved in issues because it's supposed to remain independent, it's supposed to be independent from the government. So why is Michel Carrier suddenly speaking up? Personally. Well, look, I, I think, I wouldn't say personally, but I think us as a party, yes, I, I think that, that was his intent in writing that. Um, but again, it, it, it's no different than the former language commissioner. Uh, she seemed to have a vendetta as well. We're, we're, we're trying, again, to, to bring a common sense approach, support the rights of both linguistic communities, and make sure things are done fairly and efficiently here in New Brunswick. Mr. Austin, we'll look forward to chatting with you again. I'm sure we will, given the, the unique role you'll be playing in the democracy that's about to unfold in Fredericton. Thanks for your time today. Always enjoy, Steve. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks very much. Chris Austin is the leader of the People's Alliance of New Brunswick and the man who holds the balance of power in the legislature in Fredericton. Back with more here. Nah, no, it's too bad. It's too bad, Steve. It's too bad that uh, it's over. I was enjoying this. So the bottom line is, you're using the word common sense a lot. Common sense, common sense, common sense. Now, we, uh, the public can't be really fooled by Common sense, common sense. Was well, common sense to have uh, uh, both language, both cultures in the same school. It's common sense to have in the same bus. Uh, it's common sense. Uh, see, but the problem we're having here, common sense, is we have Quebecois. Sorry, I apologize. Moody Quebecois coming from up there, coming here and say, "Je suis francophone. Je suis francophone." And Michel Carrier seemed to be playing with that thing. And I hope I'll ask again. I'll send him an email to Michel Carrier tomorrow again if he 
didn't read my email. They're so busy. They're making half a million dollar a year at that office. And see if he wants to sit down with me for a common sense uh, one on one. But if you say, Kariye, does he have common sense? And that there, that was good. That was good. And it's a damn shame that uh, one thing, one critic for Steve Murphy, it's a damn shame they focus on the issue of bilingualism. And that's why the People Alliance, they have to show that they're a party. Never mind this bilingualism shit, start talking about other issues. Compensation, uh, health care, education, everything, other issues to prove to the people that you are a party of reasons and, can I use the word common sense? Or, uh, you know, listen to common sense and facts. You know, facts, that's very important. Okay, oh, 20 minutes, that's way too long.